Good evening, family. Good evening, family. Good evening, friends. Um, Cavite, La Union, Camuning, Las Vegas, and San Pedro. So tonight, we're going to begin our journey to study chapter 2, which is, I will say, in the Prayer of Protection book by Pastor Prince, Pastor Joseph Prince. Yeah. So the text tonight is Psalm 92, verse, uh, Psalm 91, verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Gusto kumanta ni Alex. Gusto mo kumanta? Pwede naman. Okay. So, tingnan natin yung interlinear kasi mas maganda. So, what we'll do is to study um, uh, again uh, word, per, word per word. So, yung study natin tonight will be on I will say in the Hebrew, it's Amar. Amar. Ganda, no? Amar. Amar. Di ba parang may pangalan na ganyan? Amar. Marimar. Ganyan. To utter, to say. And then Yahweh, it is yud hey vav hey. Di ba? Yahweh. yud hey vav hey. yud hey vav hey. Ganyan. And then He is my refuge. Ma, makase or makse. Refuge and shelter. Yung fortress, ang ibig pa lang sabihin niyan ay kaso. Matsud. Yan. And then my God, Elohim. And then ito, alam ko, naalala nyo ba ito, Batak? Naalala nyo? Oo, ano, ano, Lex? Naalala mo? Hindi, yung word lang na Batak. Oo. Oh, welded to God, di ba? Di ba? Remember? Tsaka watermelon. Okay. Pero hindi yun ang aralan na. Ang aralin natin ay Amar, um, Yahweh, at tsaka Max, Makase. Okay. I will say, why is it important Diba? Kasi immediately, diba? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the, the, of the Almighty. And then immediately if I, it follows, I will say. Why is it important to say? Because your miracle is in your mouth. We are to confess. What is confess in Greek? Sam, do you remember? Homo? Homologio. Homologio. Diba? What is the meaning of homologio? It is to say... The same things that God is saying about you. What does God say about you? Number one, you are saved. Number two, you are sinless. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are healed. You are whole. You are prosperous. So what do you say? You say the, all of those, right? Because it is the mere principle. I will say of the Lord. Yeah. So, amar, to, to utter, to say. So tatlong Hebrew word no, at tatlong Hebrew letter. So in the in the Hebrew, actually may dalawang word for I will say. The number one is amar and number two is debar. So ang pagtutunan natin ng pansin is yung amar, but we'll quickly look into debar. Yan. Um it is a whole study. Al- alam niyo na yung debar, 'di ba? Yung bar, bar is sun, 'di ba? Anyway. Debar and amar means to speak and to say or saying. The bar has been recognized as a more direct, clear, and forceful speech. Some have even equated it with the Greek word rema. Ah, it is speaking more sincerely or from the heart. Amar, ayan, is merely an everyday conversation. It's a familial, in a familial setting. Ganyan. So when you are in a table, you are, uh, uh, you are um, amaring. Ganyan. You are amar. Ganon. So, In Leviticus 21 verse 1, it simply says, The Lord spoke, Amar, unto Moses. Because the Lord is Moses' friend. And you are also the Lord's friend. So you are Amar to him. But in 22 verse 1 and 23 verse 1, it says, And the Lord said, Debar unto Moses, saying, Amar. So ano ibig sabihin niyan? There are some teachers that says that when God debars, debars Moses to Moses, Then he must tell the people word for word what God said. So it is yung, when you quote the scriptures, di ba? It is for you to say word for word, di ba? Uh, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. Di ba? It should be word per word. And then, but when God simply amars Moses, then Moses is permitted to paraphrase what God said. But there is more. He's also telling us something about the way God speaks to us. The way God speaks to you and I is like a father. Correct, ano? 
like a friend. Just like what uh, the way he spoke to Abraham. He's not a God. Kasi minsan meron tayong, uh, hindi minsan noon, meron tayong ganito, Thus says the Lord. Diba kailangan may, uh, may, uh, may fire and brimstone and earthquake. No, he comes in a still small voice because he is your shepherd. Hallelujah. So, John mentioned, Jesus mentioned this in John 10, 27. My sheep hears my voice. He is amaring you. And I know them and they follow me. The word to know in the Greek is what? Ginosko. Which is the same word used when Mary said that she was going to have a child, but when she, but she knew no man. It is an intimate knowing. Leviticus 23, 1 says it this way, and the Lord said, my beloved, unto Moses saying, this is what I want to say. Parang husband and wife, example, the husband and wife are traveling and the wife is giving directions. She will say, okay, turn to the left and to the next stoplight. But if they are engaging in a personal conversation, she may snuggle up to her husband, take his arm and say, honey, sweetie pie, honey bunch, let's stop at that restaurant we always like. So gets the yung difference, no? The bar is very word word per word, very specific. Diba? It's like rema. But yung amar, it's just like in a family setting while you are conversing casually and intimately. Okay? So, but there are times God simply amars to us. Like for example, oh, don't watch that movie or don't eat that food. Then there are times God will snuggle up to us and the bar. And he says, my beloved. And then amar... Let's go over the over the passage of scripture I pointed out to you this morning. So it's the way it's it's the um the way the Lord talks to you and he always di ba na aral natin yung the emphasis of his voice. What is the emphasis of his voice? And that is actually the way that you are going to say. What is the emphasis of his voice? That you confess that you homologio that you are loved, that you are healed that you are whole. That is the emphasis of his voice, that he is with you, that everything is possible because the I am is with you. Hallelujah. So, there are really two words in Hebrew. There are really two words in Hebrew and Aramaic for word. Debar and Amar. Yet, the Lord Jesus uses a third word in Aramaic which is translated as Melta. In the it is the the it is the Aramaic equivalent to the Hebrew word motsa. Yeah. Motsa, hindi yung bread. Used in Deuteronomy 8:3, which also says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know the the way the way uh pag yung kunwari, uh, you are dry, you are um you are short, you are um restless. You know, you just need to, you just need to eat. You just need food. You just need amar. You just need the bar or you just need motza. Jesus said, it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Motza and melta both mean a place or source from which water is drawn. Water is drawn or comes from. So there, there, there are times in life right now, parang ngayon ang init in it, right? So what happens when there is um, too much heat? Diba? It dries up, so it needs water. The plants needs water or else they're gonna die. It's it's also like us, right? We need the everyday water of the word. We need we need to hear from the Lord every day. Yan. So that's why we record natin tong ating mga Bible study. Because it takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from your Heavenly Father's mouth. How come how come Sam, uh, Gabby and Ezra, you grew up to be Ezra, Gabby and Sam. When you were growing up, when you were still a baby, we named you Sam, we named you Ezra, we named you Gabby. Even though you were crying and then when you were a toddler you were, you were misbehaving, we didn't call you any other name. We called you your name. And because we were calling you Ezra, we were calling you Gabby, we were calling you Sam. You grew up in 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 uh, to be Sam, to be Ezra, and to be Gabby. We didn't call you uh, uh, bad, or we didn't call you maldito, even though sometimes they were misbehaving. That's the way. That's the way also to grow in the Lord. We are to say, we are to hear from Him, and we are to say, right, so that we grow into the maturity, into the 
we are awakened to the truth that we are loved. We are awakened to the truth that we are forgiven, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So how come there are days na ano, there are days na we don't feel it? Ah, baka nakatulog lang. Kasi di ba, sabi nga natin, di ba, we are to be awakened that the Lord is with us. If you are asleep ba, are you aware? Hindi, di ba? So when you are when you are awakened then that's when the that's when that's when you are so conscious of his presence and so conscious of his word hearing his voice the sheep knows my voice so say what god says about you it is confession homologio so what what is the first and foremost thing that you have to say you are the righteousness of god in christ Sinless is your identity. God is not forgiving sin and making people holy today. Ah, Jesus did that 2,000 years ago. We just need to be awakened to the truth and walk in our holiness and forgiveness. That is why the gospel has to be preached to, to people who are asleep. He did it before we were even born. So from God's perspective, sin has never been an issue for you and me. In Hebrews 1 and 3, when he had... When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. By himself is dia o tu in Greek. Dia is completely and successfully through himself. No help from us are required or needed. He accomplished purification of sin and then sat down, finished. Sin completely done away with and we are seated with him completely, 100%. Sinless or, or in other words, you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. So in Romans 6, 1, 5, sabi ni Paul, What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Anong dapat sabihin? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin, you're all already died to sin, live any longer therein? Or do you not know? That as many of us were baptized into the into Christ Jesus were, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through the baptism in through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. The death, when Jesus died, you died. When Jesus rose from the dead, you also rose from the dead. Hallelujah. You resurrected from the dead. You co-resurrected. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Paul declared that we were co-united, joined with him in his death, cut off from death because we are now co-resurrected. This is spoken as an absolute stated fact of something that happened to us. We had nothing to do with it. And then he says, but also. He doesn't want them or us to just stop at being co-crucified. He says we were likewise co-united in his resurrection. Co-resurrected. That's why it's important. I will say. Diba? He who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Paul had just said in the beginning of verse 5 that we became united or co-joined in the likeness of his death. The word likeness isn't saying it was kind of like it or someone like it or lesser version of it. He chose the word homo omnia. There are other words in Greek for likeness. There's hosper, which means just or even just. There's also hautos, which means in this way or in this manner. But these words are adverbs modifying the verb. But here he used homo ayoma. It means the same. The word is a noun, meaning the same. In other words, our co-joining is as one. You are one with the Lord. The root word is homo, and it's adverb meaning same time or same place. It means we're co-joined in death and resurrection as one at the same place or same time. In other words, his death was our death and his resurrection was our resurrection. Now, there was one death and a, a, a co-death and there was one resurrection. A co-resurrection in that same place, same time 2,000 years ago, all mankind died and raised with him. In him, it is finished. That's why the gospel has to be preached to people who are asleep. Hallelujah. So now, 
Okay, let's go to the third, uh, tama ba? Second word pa lang. Yahweh. Okay, ito maganda to. yud hey vav hey yud hey vav hey You know, in Isaiah 53, the verse for healing, by his stripes you are healed, the the uh, Yahweh is actually um, hidden. So this is a preaching by Pastor Prince. Ang ganda nito, every four letters, makikita mo yung yud hey vav hey Ayan o, yud, pa-reverse, yud hey vav Hey, anong hindi niya naalala ko sabi ni Pastor Prince? He has reversed every curse. Yan, God, smitten, stricken, steamed, was afflicted. Yud, hey, bab, hey. So when you say, I will say of the Lord, you are actually declaring and saying, your healing, your wholeness. Hallelujah. So yan yung ano, no? ito yung, uh, tag nito. Inscription above the above the head of the Lord Jesus. Okay, inilagay ko ulito kasi I think it's um the emphasis of the Lord's voice. Ang mga bagets, actually kanina, uh, we prayed with a brother and sister's daughter for the gift of speaking in tongues because it's so important. Remember yung yung migams, di ba? It is actually um under the shadow of your wings. Yung, yung wings don is kanaf. And we studied that it is actually... Um, the sound that the bird makes when he flaps his wings, which sounds almost like speaking but with an intelligible, an intelligible word. So the word has been related to nigams, and a nigam is the singing of nonsensical words. When you are afraid, when you are anxious, speak in tongues. The purpose of singing nonsensical words, parang yung last week, di ba? Dooby 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 doo, di ba? Gab dun sa fiddler. It is to block out your flesh and allow your spirit to speak in purity to God's spirit. So just like the woman with the issue of blood in Luke 8, 43 to 46, she touched the fringe of his cloak because the fringe of his cloak is the wings, divine zit zit. And immediately, her hemorrhage stopped. Scripture says immediately, the Lord, the Lord actually doesn't, doesn't, you know, hindi siya sadis na, ah, pinag ka. Immediately, her hemorrhage stops. So we believe for, for anything that is, you know, um, ailing you, the Lord is saying immediately, hemorrhage stop. Who is, sabi niya, who is the one who touched me? Someone did touch me. You know, when you are speaking in tongues, you are touching the Lord. Diba? You know, ibig sabihin nun eh. The woman dared to go into the personal space of the Messiah. She touched the wing, the edge, the corner of Jesus' garment because she knew what was all she has to do. It is a moment of great faith. Diba? Ano naman ang connection doon sa I will say? If you ha- if you are not, if you doesn't, if you don't have any words to say, and you forgot, right? Parang ano ka na, so you're natituloryo ka na, then speak in tongues. That is actually one form of I will say because you are um, saying perfect prayers or declaring perfect declarations. Yan, kaya ako siningit. Okay. Napunta tayo doon sa refuge. Sabi nga niyan, uh, in the Hebrew, the word refuge is makase, which comes from the Semitic root word kasa, which means a shelter, protection, or go aside. It is the same word that was used in the city of refuge. Yan. Merong anim na cities of refuge that was assigned, appointed um, to the Levites on top of the 42 cities in Numbers 35, 6-7. In Jewish literature, ito, ito, ano, um, this will really bless you because narinig ko na itong preaching na to, but I never saw, I never saw this facet. Kasi ang alam natin, di ba, cities of refuge, you can, you, um, if you accidentally um, killed a person during that time, no, you go into the cities of, cities of refuge and then you will be protected. Right? You go to G, actually the city of refuge is the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then in Jewish literature and Talmud, the cities of refuge were not necessarily a place of refuge. Oh, akala ko ba a place of refuge? Bakit not necessarily? Yes, someone who killed another person could find asylum and protection at the city of refuge, but the city of refuge served another purpose. Do you want to know? Sam, do you want to know? What is the other purpose for the city of refuge? It was called a place of atonement. It is a place of forgiveness. 
It is a place your identity is established as sinless. The fugitive was required to go through a number of steps to atone for the death he caused. The first thing was that he was to he was to be put on trial to determine if the cause was accidental or premeditated. If premeditated, he was turned over to the relatives of the deceased who did what they wanted to do with the old with, with the person. If it was an accident, it was if it was accidental, then they deter, then they determine if it was manslaughter or self-defense. If it was either one of these, he was kept at the city of refuge and allowed to go through a process of atonement. So it's actually a city of atonement without fear or harm from relatives. Once the death was fully atoned, the person was allowed to go free with a guarantee that he would not be harmed. If anyone should seek to harm him over his incident, they would pay with their own blood. So atonement in the city of refuge. In Hebrews 4, 14 to 16, you are, you see, according to the Talmud, if the high priest should die, all the people seeking asylum for having killed someone who was living in the city of refuge would automatically receive atonement for their crime. The death of the high priest, who is our high priest? Jesus. Jesus would atone for their crime. Upon the death of the high priest, all were free to leave the city of refuge unmolested. They were declared innocent of any crime. Ancient Semitic man, in the ancient Semitic uh, uh, understanding, they, when they hear the word kasa, they did not just think of refuge, but atonement as well. It is a city where your sins are forgiven. The psalmist is saying that the Lord is his atonement and his place of protection. When he says he's God, he uses the word for God, which is Elohim. Elohim which is sometimes used for the word judge or a judge who is the supreme authority. The Lord is the supreme judge and his Messiah, Jesus, would die for his sin and atone for them so that he will trust in his judge to free him from his sin. The psalmist, David, is starting off with the most important protection of all and that is protected from the penalty of our sins through our high priest, Jesus Christ, who died for us. And his name is Jesus. So there are six cities. In Joshua 27 to 8, it was um, outlined Kedesh, Shechem, Kiryat Arba, na, ito na, di ba, na aral natin kung Kiryat Arba, Bezer, Ramot, in Gilead, and Gulan, in Bashan. There are six cities. Five of them were situated on the top of the mountain with the exception of Bezer. This is a perfect depiction of Psalm 121.1-2, which says, I will lift up my eyes to the hill from where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, which who made heaven and earth. So ito yan, ano? ito yung uh, cities of refuge. So actually, strategically located, where in anybody can just run. Di ba? Ano yan, tinan mo, oh. parang naka, ano siya, naka-spread out. Yan, yung may mga pula, orange pala. So, Kedesh, it means in Hebrew, sanctuary. Shechem, it means shoulder. Hebron, fellowship. Bezer, fortress. Ramot, highly exalted. Golan, ang ibig pala ng, ibig sabihin ng Golan is rejoicing. So, what does it mean when you put it together? A sanctuary is his, is his shoulder offered in fellowship. A fortress to highly exalt us with rejoicing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a God. What a God, right? So, so, G- who is our city of refuge? Sino Jesus. Sam? Jesus. So, what is the city of refuge declaring? No more sin consciousness. Sin consciousness is our only tie to sickness, disease, fear, poverty, death, etc. What is sin consciousness? It is the New Testament language equivalent of the old knowledge of good and evil. There's this singer, si George Michael. Kilala mo ba yun, Lex? And then the ano, guilty feelings got no rhythm. Diba? So tama yung sinasabi nga niya. When you are guilty, you are sin conscious. So guilty, pag nagigilty guilty ka, diba? guilty naman ako, kumain ako ng cake. Just eat it. Diba? Mapapahama ka pa. So this actually equivalent to sin consciousness. 
and it affects every single area of our lives. It get you it, it, it gets into everything. And sin consciousness, either real or imagined, keeps you connected to the fall. In other words, connected with the fallen Adamic mindset ruled by sin consciousness and death awareness. Sin consciousness is the awareness of the difference between good and evil, the awareness of the difference between God's perception and reality of very good and finished, and our knowledge of discernment of what we perceive to be good and evil. Sin consciousness is your heart not grasping your identity. And sin consciousness empowers the law of performance and contradicts what grace reveals. Because the minute you get under the influence of guilt or sin consciousness, you identify with a false identity. You are pretending, diba? you are being a hypocrite. You know hypocrite? Hypocrite is uh, pretending to be someone who is not. For example, you are pretending to be a sinner. You are no more a sinner. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're pretending to be sick. You are no more, you are no more sick. The Lord says you are whole. Yan, even though may nakikita kang symptom, the Lord says you are whole. Hallelujah. But the good news of the gospel is that Jesus forever eradicated a sin consciousness from our minds. Hebrews 10, 2, for the worshipers once purified would have no more consciousness of sin. Once purified, finished, done, the lamb, the sinless lamb became sin for you to be sinless. He took away the sin of the world, freeing mankind's conscious consciences. Yeah. We need to have a finished and very good consciousness. Live in constant awareness. Live in consciousness. High consciousness that you are healed. Whole, prosperous, successful, life conscious. So my dear family, my dear family, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. You are declaring... In other words, right? You are free. You are sinless. And the Lord is your Savior. Hallelujah. And you are you are forever in the city of refuge. That, my dear family, is chapter 2, part 1. Praise the Lord.